The LS50 Wireless from British loudspeaker manufacturer Kef is an active loudspeaker that really pushed the boundaries of what you can do at a very, very affordable price point for high-end audio. These were extremely popular with many people, including myself. I think these are absolutely wonderful speakers. The amps are built in, the DACs are built in, obviously the drivers on the front, digital connectivity is on the back, you plug them into the wall and off you go. The biggest complaint about these speakers was the fact that you had to join them together with Ethernet cable. And therefore people complained, well, they called the Kef LS50 wireless, but they're not really wireless. This is a hi-fi system in a box. It's called the LSX, it's from Kef. This comes out, power cables, big chunk of styrofoam. Look at that, two new speakers. I'll lift them out one by one. Another box of accessories and look, nothing else. Before I open these, two power cables. So that tells us, power cables tell us that they, these are two active loudspeakers. That's an important detail. In the accessories box, speakers, speakers. Quick start guide, that's what we need, quick start guide. In here, we have a remote control, and many people will recognize that as being almost identical to that which comes with the LS50 wireless. And lastly, some ethernet cable. But don't make any assumptions just yet. Look at these little guys. Fabric, soft fabric. And here we've got Kef's UniQ driver. This is a new version of the UniQ driver. So let's open this one. Now this one, I reckon, is the slave because all the connectivity is on the first one. Okay, I'll show you the front first. Again, UniQ driver, nice soft fabric. And you can see this is the slave speaker. These were designed by a British guy who lives in Hong Kong called Michael Young. So that's where the fabric comes from. That's where also you can see the colored tweeter in here is also the same as the port on the back. And Michael Young has apparently previously done work for Pompidou Museum, Cathay Pacific, Coca-Cola. Anyway, this is not just some kind of like anybody designer. This is a proper industrial designer. You just want to touch them. So things to notice here, the curved front baffle, which is like the LS50 wireless and the LS50 before it. The port on the rear here is a flared port to prevent sort of chuffing and sound coming out the back here. So here we've got some tiny holes that allow the heat sink to breathe. There's a heat sink in here because there are amplifiers in here and DACs in here and a streamer in here. So if you look at this, this is Kef's UniQ driver. And what that means is that the, the tweeter sits in the middle, but it's also set back. So it's a point source, but it's also time aligned being set back. So it's coaxial, and I think Kef call it co-incidental. This mid-base driver is about 12 centimeters across. It's made of an alloy of magnesium and aluminum. The tweeter is almost two centimeters. So you can see the little red thing in there, and that's an aluminum tweeter. And then these are powered by amplifiers inside. So there's a 70 watt class D amp on the mid-base driver, 30 watt class D amp on the tweeter. The crossover in this speaker is done in DSP, just like the LS50 wireless. So that's the basic essentials of this active loudspeaker. We're gonna go into my lounge room now to set these up. All right, so I'm gonna set up the master speaker. So I'm just gonna plug it in like that. So these two speakers can talk to each other wirelessly. It's not using Wi-Fi, it's using Kef's proprietary protocol. They just talk without wires. So to the pedantics that didn't like the, the Kef LS50 wireless and weren't technically wireless, the LSX addresses that issue head on. And they're smaller and they're more affordable as well, they're about half the price. I just want to point out some of the connectivity on the back of these speakers. There's a Toslink input, so that's for like connecting a TV or a I don't know, like an old CD player or a games console. There's an auxiliary three and a half mil input. So if you've got a phono stage, so you've got an old vintage tape player, you could connect it in through this. There is a subwoofer output for bass heads. That's not me, but you can if you want to, right there. There are two ethernet sockets here. 
So one is for streaming to the speaker over your network. So like UPnP or Spotify Connect. This ethernet input, that's for optionally tethering the two together with an ethernet cable a la LS50 wireless. But we don't need that here. We can just set them up wirelessly, which is what we're gonna do. This thing here, this is like a, a USB power output. You can use this for recharging your phone. I use this differently, but we'll, we'll see how I use that later. So this flashing light is telling us that this speaker is not yet able to see the slave speaker, and we need to use the KEF Control app. There used to be one app, and KEF have forked them into two. There's KEF Control and KEF Stream. We're gonna use KEF Control first to set up this pair of LSX. So this is the LSX, this is the LS50 wireless. This is the master version of each speaker. You can see the difference in size, it's bloody obvious. What you might not notice is that on top of this LS50 wireless is this touch panel. And this touch panel is absent from the LSX. That's why we need to use the KEF Control app to set them up, these guys. So KEF have subdivided their previous LS50 wireless app into two apps now. There's one called KEF Stream, that's for UPnP and Spotify Connect and Tidal streaming. We're gonna concern ourselves right now with KEF Control, which is the setup app. And it says, hello, which speaker do you wanna set up? So we wanna set up LSX. You can use this for the LS50 wireless as well, but we wanna set up LSX today. So we click on that, set up your speaker, connect both speakers to power, we've done that. It says that the LED should be flashing amber and white, which it is. So we go to next. Then we need to tell it which Wi-Fi network to connect them to. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Now we get to name our speaker. So I'm gonna call this LSX Darko Black. Next. The light on the speaker is now just flashing white. So it's rebooting. And it's now connecting to my Wi-Fi network. So the app just basically injects my Wi-Fi network credentials into the speaker and success. So let's start. Right now you can see here the four main inputs of this speaker. So we're connected to Wi-Fi and it invites us to open the KEF Stream app, which is the second of the two apps. So here we can browse to Tidal and I can go to like my music, my playlists. And here's my Cobas playlist from a few weeks back. And there we go, it starts playing. So I want to make it louder. So you can see like with volume changes here, there's a very tiny lag between when you click the volume you want and it actually executing in the speaker, but that's because we're all Wi-Fi here. We're Wi-Fi from Tidal to the speaker and also wireless between the speakers. But we could move it over to Bluetooth if we wanted to. And you can see that this is blue here. The blue ring corresponds to the blue flashing light on the speaker, which means it's waiting to Bluetooth pair. We can do that. I'm not gonna go into that. You know how to Bluetooth pair a speaker. This purple ring corresponds to the optical or Toslink input. If I wanna connect my TV, that's where I put that in the Toslink. Auxiliary, yellow, again, the colors correspond between the app and the speaker itself. This is where I connect a phono stage if I wanted to, or any other analog source, even like an iPod or something like that. So four main inputs. One, two, three, four. And this is also where we turn the loudspeaker on. If these speakers were off, we'd have to fire this app up and then just click one of the inputs to bring them back into life because there's no power button on those speakers themselves. You need the app or the remote control. All right, so we can power them off. And we can power them on. And that's using the remote control like that. And they can, they'll turn themselves off after a specified time. You can see now that the speaker is in, it's in standby mode. This is what the app says. We can actually pull these speakers out of standby mode and directly into the input we want. So let's say we want to go straight to Toslink for our TV. Click on that and it boots them up. So we need to talk about high res audio, if that's your thing. Because with these speakers, 
paired wirelessly, the communication between the two speakers is 24 bit, 48 kilohertz. So if you want to go any higher res than that, you're going to need to connect them again with ethernet cable, just like the OS50 wireless. Inside Kef's control app, you can tell the app which side the master is on. So if the master is on the right hand side, you can tell it's on the right. Here it's on the left hand side. So my master speaker is on the, on the left hand side and that light tells us the status of the speaker. There is no light on the slave speaker unless there's a problem with connections. So if you don't see a light here, that's a good thing. So the million dollar question is, how do they sound? Um, well, the short answer is compared to the LS50 wireless, they're not as good. They're not as expensive, they're not as big, they're not quite as refined, and they don't, it's not that they don't have the base depth of the LS50 wireless, because they go, they, these things go pretty damn low. It's they, they just don't have that, that forward heft, that weight that fills larger rooms. So this is undoubtedly a small room speaker. It's more than that, we'll get to that, but it's, this is a small room speaker. Um, what it does have, it has the very similar tonal balance to the LS50 wireless, and it has that really lovely crystalline mid-range where everything sort of opens up, like you're kind of pulling apart the mouth of the singer. Of significant interest to people who make music at home, or you know, bedroom DJs or people like that, people who use speakers like this little Genelec, this is the G2, these LSX sound more transparent. As good as these are, they make the Genelec sound a little bit cut like that, just a little bit. So in terms of mid-range transparency, or the feeling of mid-range transparency, the LSX have it all over these G2. The other thing about this Genelec is that it doesn't have a streamer built in. So you need to add your own digital preamps, so like DAC with volume control and streamer as well. So this is not the complete package, whereas the LSX are. On the back of this G2, we have some room compensation dip switches. And you might think, okay, well, that, I mean, that seals it for me. The, the Genelec has that and the LSX doesn't, but the LSX does. So I'd say that the LSX really does win out over the Genelec in terms of imaging, definitely imaging, and musical insight. I'm not talking about musicality, I'm talking about insight, like how deep you go into the sound. I think most people would find these speakers to have a lot of bounce, a lot of liveliness, there's good top and bottom extension. What's interesting about these speakers is, is if you connect the two speakers with ethernet cable, and then in the Kef control app, you disable the wireless interlink, you get a slightly better sound, maybe like 5% better, but it's definitely noticeable, it's definitely there just using this. So the wireless connection between these two speakers is for convenience, but best sound is from an ethernet interlink. These are slightly too small for my standard Atacama speaker stands. But what Kef have done is kind of cool. They've put a screw socket for stands on the bottom. So you can get some of those like thin stands like that. And if you're an audiophile who thinks that you would rather be dead than using stands like that, well, I mean, really, these speakers are kind of, they're probably not for you. If you want to do DSD or I don't think they're MQA enabled yet, if you want to do those things, again, these are not for you. If you want to do 24192, yes, these speakers can do it. Um, but only with Ethernet, and they downsample to 2496. So with the Ethernet, you get the 2496 interlink as opposed to 2448 using the wireless interlink. So talking about the LSX's sound quality is a bit like trying to hit a moving target because it depends upon the settings we apply inside the Kef control app. Down here in the Kef control app, we can set profiles. Right now, I've only got a default profile. In the basic section, it asks me where is my speaker. It's on a desk. Distance from the front of the speaker to the edge of the table or the desk. Speaker distance to the wall. Well, it's not less than 10, but it's not more than 50. How is your room? Is it damped? Is it moderate or is it lively? The size of my room is between 20 and 40, yes. And do I have a subwoofer plugged in? No, I do not. And if we go into expert mode, you can get you can get pretty granular about the uh, the subwoofer low pass 
frequencies and filters and you can also get granular about the treble trim how close it is to the wall of the desk this is expert mode so again this is all dsp powered all very cool all very helpful to real world situations where you might use these speakers because let's face it very few people have an ideal room with room treatments and people just have to put these speakers down where they fit visually and then we can adjust the sound according to that fit. Another kind of misconception about the LS50 wireless from my point of view is that here in my office, these speakers are too big for this desk. I think they're too big physically. I think they're too big sonically. I have the, 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 the image, the soundstage image, sort of coalescing behind my head somewhere. So I always feel like these are too much speaker for, for my desk here. My desk is not small and it's not light either. This is a very solid piece of wood. This is another Kef LSX. And this is how I know how they sound. Like this is how I can tell you how they sound already because I've had this pair for several weeks. I thought I'd talk about the way I have these set up on my desk and how I use them in this particular situation and how I use the Kef Control app as well. So in the settings here, I've got cable mode engaged. So I've got the Ethernet interlink connected between the two. I also need to go into the profile settings and we've seen this before down the bottom here so I can tell the app exactly where the speaker is sitting. It's on a desk, so I'm gonna say on a desk here. It's quite a long way from the edge of the table because it's set back from the edge of the table. It's more than a meter, so distance the wall behind. I'm gonna move that to here. Is this room damped, moderate, or lively? This is a lively room. So I'm gonna to go to lively because that will bring down the, the treble response a little bit. And then how large is this room? Again, it's like 20 to 40. Is the subwoofer plugged in? No, it's not. So I can save that. I've got them set up like that. With my laptop here, I can, you know, I can obviously open up. I could pair Bluetooth to these speakers and play music, but I'm a little bit too much of an audiophile nerd for that. So I like to use the inbuilt digital connectivity in here. I don't use DLNA. I'm not really in love with the Kef Stream app. It's okay, it's serviceable, and they're introducing a beta for Gapless at the moment. So that's an improvement. As regular viewers will know, I'm a huge fan of Rune. So how can I possibly use Rune from my laptop here to control these speakers when they're not Rune ready? And what I've got, a little Google Chromecast audio attached to the back. And it's going Toslink out into the back of the speaker here. And it's powered by, remember that smartphone recharging socket right from the beginning? I'm using that five volt output to power this Chromecast. So it sits tightly on the back. I guess if I really wanted to, I could blue tech it here like this, but I don't just yet. So I can rune stream to this. It does 2496. This Toslink input does 2496. And because I'm using the ethernet interlink, I also get 2496 support. So that's my little rune hack for the LSX until they become rune ready, if at all. We don't know yet. So to get this rune thing to work, I obviously put on the Toslink input here. My Chromecast audio is here. They're not too big and the soundstage really kind of presents just about here in front of, in front of my eyes. It's fantastic. These, these are the right size speakers for this desk, especially with the profile that I've set in the Kef Control app. We must really ask ourselves, who is this product for? And I think it's for quite a vast range of people. First of all, anybody with an office, that's obvious, right? But this scene also translates to anybody making music at home or bedroom producers or bedroom DJs. This will be a fine choice for them. And they can also Bluetooth when the, their mates come over, they can hook in their computer. One thing we should say, there's no USB input on these speakers, so you can't go straight out into that, which is why I use the Chromecast audio. Back down in my lounge room, I'm gonna put the ethernet interlink into this pair of LSX. And then from behind the leaves, at this plant, I'm connecting the interlink to the slave speaker here like this. We have to reboot these speakers when we do this, I think. That's that one plugged in again. This one will be plugged in again. And then we go back to the app. So we go Kef Control. And you can see it's saying darker red. There are the speakers upstairs. So I'm gonna click this drop down. Darker black is what we want. 
I need to turn them on first. Let's turn them on. So the profile I have down here in my lounge is obviously called lounge. My speaker is on a desk. It's very close to the edge of the desk. It's kind of, it's, there's a little bit of distance between the speaker and the wall. My room is moderate in terms of acoustic makeup. It's between 20 and 40 square meters in size and there's no subwoofer plugged in, which is why this one's not engaged here. So go back and you can see it's here. I can click on this one and I can, if I wanted to adopt the office profile for these speakers, I could, or I could go back to default if I wanted to. These speakers are also for people who don't want the expense or the size of the LS50 wireless. If you're in the market for a sound bar, don't necessarily go ahead and buy a sound bar straight away. Give these a listen first because they give you a much, much wider soundstage. And that's also true of the name Muso and the WLA Phantom Reactor. These will give you like proper stereo separation. They'll just sound bigger. And I guess more like music is supposed to. Music is not supposed to come out of a box this size and radiate outwards. It's meant to come out of like left and right speakers. That's how it's mixed. What I like about the LSX is these are speakers for people who don't know about hi-fi and don't want to know about hi-fi necessarily. You just set up and you go with music and you can put them anywhere and you can tweak their configuration inside the app. And there are enough different kinds of inputs to satisfy nearly everybody's need in modern life. I mean, this is not like a, a, a dyed in the wall audiophile speaker. If you like Harbaths, as I do, like if you go, go, and, go and live with your Harbaths. Between the audiophile world and the sort of the man in the street consumer electronics world, there's this gulf. Speakers like these, the LSX from KEF, bridge those two worlds. They allow the man in the street to have access to better sound quality at a more affordable price without the hassle of setup, without the intimidation of having to go to a dealer and asking about hi-fi systems. You can just buy the box walk it home and just plug them in, like a TV. These are kind of like a TV, you just plug it in, you set it up for a little bit and off you go. Super simple. And I think these are absolutely bloody amazing. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> so we can power them off with the remote control like this. And it would work if I engage the battery. Let's do this first. Ah, that's an absolutely bullshit way of explaining that. Let me try that again. 